Well, we're here this morning. Good to have Sister Kate Green with yes, us today. Yes, yes, yes. Her husband Nathaniel is in the bullpen, getting ready to come into the game. So you just pray for him. He's a little bit nervous. He's okay. He'll be all right. He'll be fine. He just doesn't know he's going to be fine. He just doesn't know he's going to be fine yet. He's going to be fine. Yep. There's only one thing that the devil gives you, and that's nervousness and fear. God never gives you nervousness and fear. Right. right. Never. That's right. Amen? Okay, so you know it's a lie of the devil. So let's go to Romans. Now we got our thingy up here. Did you ever get one? No, but me and Richard texted Because when I, Richard called me and said, I'm getting it, I said, you better let Rebecca know because she's going to get he one. He heard it on the sermon when you said, well, Richard ain't going to give you one. So. <laughs> See, that's reverse, that's reverse psychology. See, I know how Richard works. You tell him you can't do something? Yeah, I'm going tonight. Already got it. Okay. So he sent me a text. He said, I got the, I got the cable. And I said, you better tell Rebecca because I know Rebecca's going to get me one. So, But it was a little different than this one, so we've upgraded, but we still got this one in case anybody needs it. But on the new iPad, it's different. But we're, going, we're talking about the book of Romans. I want us to... Uh, like I said, pray for Nathaniel. He'll do just fine this morning. He's yeah, he very much. Has anybody yes. heard from Chris Daniel? Yeah, that's what I want. Um, as far as... A couple days ago. Uh, yeah, we know he passed. Yeah, he passed. Yeah, he died Thursday. Yeah. But they, 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 they had... They, 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 he died Thursday morning, I think. They yeah. might have I a funeral in a, next weekend, I think, but they're trying to figure that out. Next week? I think that's, there's, there's a few different dates up in there. Yeah, I think it's, I told, didn't he send me at June the 2nd or something? They're going to have the funeral. Okay. Why are they keeping him out somewhere? So the family, I guess. So the family can get there. Next week, plus you got the holiday this yeah. is coming up. And while I'm at it. Uh, we need to remember the on Memorial Day. We don't remember the live ones. We remember the ones that went on. And uh, well, some of the live ones done their job. That's, that's Veterans, Veterans Day. Day. Oh, <laughs> Memorial Day is for those that have already passed. Okay. It's a memorial for those that have already gone, gone on. So remember the ones that went on is Memorial Day. Veterans Day is when you remember the live ones. And you thank them for their service. So now we're in the book of Romans. Now, we'll get get started. Thanks, sister. <clears throat> in the book of Romans, we began by telling you that Paul was not in Rome. All right? Paul was going to Rome. So he had studied the Rome. He had been to Rome because he was a Roman citizen. Right? All right? Paul was a Roman citizen, and he knew the ways of the Romans. Uh, they were completely pagan. Right? Right? That's right. Oh, okay. They were completely pagan. Beautiful honey dripping out of my, <laughs> my uh, filter. That I picked it up, took a picture of that, man. That's a good picture. Yeah. That's a good picture. Well, we just lifted the filter up, and I took the picture as it was dripping down. So, man, makes me want. We're gonna extract next week, so the Lord's give us a pretty good crop of honey. So, uh, thank the Lord and the bees. Yes. But we come down here, and we were looking, and, and I found out something too. <clears throat> that reading the King James Version is good, but I went back and found my emphatic diglot. Right. Everybody knows what that is. That's the Latin Vulgate. This is the original, not the King James transcribed. This is what they transcribed from. Right. Okay? And it's really good to read this. I like to read other commentaries, but this is the pure word. This is exactly translated from what was written, what Paul wrote with his own hand to what it's saying, and then they took this and made the King James Version out of it. Now, we know that it's been verified. We know Brother Brown said that that was the King James Version was the version that, that God liked yes. right. and uh, that he used, and it was uh, put in order correctly. <clears throat> but I want to, we're going to read this, and we've already went, went through some of this, and I'm not going to back up much because Romans is the longest letter that Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome. And, it's, and the letter is long because he brings, just like, to me, Romans and Hebrews are probably the two best books. Because what he does, even in Romans, he goes back into the Old Testament, gets a lot of the Old Testament scrolls, 
<clears throat> updates them, and, and that's what he... A lot of times, folks, if you really remember what you read in the Old Testament, he's quoting Old Testament Scripture. Right. And if you'll look in your... If you got Schofield, Schofield does a good job stopping you and relating back to an Old Testament Scripture in that middle... Yes. Middle part right here. That's why Brother Brown, I believe, likes Schofield too. Now, all these commentaries, they're good. Some of them are not good. But this in the middle is exactly if Paul was talking about something, Schofield would relate you back to Deuteronomy 10 17 and all different ones. Uh, even back to Matthew, Romans, and the through the scripture. That's why I like Schofield. And this is the King James Version, Schofield King James Version. With all the commentaries, and then you got your. That's why I like this app because you can match that. Go to your strong concordance, and it tells you what that word means, and how many times it's been used, and what book of the Bible it's used in. So I like this app. The uh, in, uh, Decarta is the name of the app that the Bible is, and then you got different uh, applications. That you, I looked to see if they had an emphatic dialogue, but they did not. Um, but I got this uh, years ago and I like looking through it because it tells you exactly what he said because look, look at verse 11 right here I got verse 11 I'm going to read it to you out of the original, can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. for I greatly desire to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift for your firm establishment now that's what Paul said in the original that was his original letter and then man translated it, which is fine. Two, for I long to see you that I may impart on you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. This is for your firm establishment. So we're going to try to now, as we go through, I want to read King James. We're going to comment on it. And then I'm going to read you what it says in the, uh, in the diaglot. And I think we got down to, we got to verse 18. So let's go to 18 and let's talk about this for a minute. Let's go back up to 17. <clears throat> now you read it on this screen and I'm going to read it to you right here. For the righteousness of God by faith is revealed therein order to, in order to faith. As it has been written, but the righteous by faith shall live. So you're reading, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now we know that scripture comes from two places in the Bible, right? One of them is Habakkuk 2 and 4 and then Galatians 3.11. But Habakkuk 2 and 4, in the Old Testament, the Bible tells us to just shall live by faith. What happened was is man didn't catch that. Come on in, brother. Man didn't catch that. Okay? Yeah. But a man named Martin Luther reading the Bible, read the just shall live by faith, and turned the world upside down just by that one little scripture. All right. And we may get into a little more of that this afternoon, because I'm going to have to background some for the um, preaching of the seal. But the just shall live by faith is totally contrary to any Roman doctrine, any Roman idea, Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholic Church, that's where the church came out of was Rome. Right? And the... Uh, uh, Nicaea Rome, that was all done in Rome. So what what I'm telling you is when you read this, that's why I want you, I've always been a person where you just don't tell me what it says. Give me the background. Let me know what Paul is actually thinking. Right. I try to put myself, and you should do the same thing, because if God's talking to you, he's not talking to Paul. Right. He's talking to you. Right. Sure, he said something to Paul because you weren't alive at the time. Right. But Paul knowing it, and let, you know how great this is? Listen to how God works. Paul died in AD 66. Somewhere in there. <clears throat> he didn't even know John. He knew John, but John went to Patmos after that. Paul, you know, Paul had no scripture, old or new, that told him about seals. Yet the seals that we preach and the seals that Brother Branham brought is laced all in the book of Romans and all in the book of Hebrews and everything that Paul wrote, grievous wolves, right. all these different things. He knew that there was what? There's some among you. Look, right here. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men yes. who hold the truth. They hold the very truth in their hand and they turn and make it unrighteousness. Now the Bible says here in the original says, besides the wrath of God is revealed from heaven in regard to all impiety and injustice of those men who through injustice suppress the truth. You see the meaning behind that? Suppress the truth. And that's what they've done. They held the truth because how can you hold the truth and be unrighteous? That's right. The truth is the truth is the truth. Right. And the truth is righteous. But when you what? Suppress the truth. Now what did they do? When that first horse rider went out in the first church age, first three church ages, he was a white righteous <clears throat> church. But it was all in opposition. What did they do? They suppressed the truth. Serenthius. Right. All those one in Irenaeus' time, Serenthius bringing the doctrine that Jesus wasn't God till the River Jordan. Well, we see that in the message now. Right. That was an old devil from a long time ago. Right. Poor old Serenthius is dead and gone, but the doctrine's not. Right. That's right. So, in the message, picked that same demon up. Hello. Yeah, come on. And what? Suppress the truth. Yeah. And that's the problem. We suppress the truth. You can't do away with the truth, but you can suppress it. And that's what. Paul is telling the Romans that there's men among you who hold the truth. Now remember, the truth at that time was not the Bible. This thing wasn't written. Now there were scrolls, there was the Torah, there was the Old Testament prophets that Paul could read because being studied under Gamaliel, he had access to all the old written scripture. But there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, right. Galatians, Ephesians, none of that was written so that Paul could go back and say, well, these men are reading the Bible and getting untruth. No, they got untruth straight from the devil right. listening to what Paul said. That's right. Exactly. Right. Or Peter, or John, or all the ones that, that spoke truth in that time. Because listen, truth has to be presented to you Listen to me. Truth has to be presented to you. If, tr if non-truth is presented to you, you're going to believe that is truth. Right. Exactly. How many of you come through a Trinitarian religion? Now that wasn't truth at all. But you held it as truth. Right. Because what happened is that demon, and it's a demon, yes. suppressed the truth Back in the first church age, second church age, third church, that's why these seals are so important. I was thinking this morning, and I'll get it on it this afternoon. The seals are for you. Yes. They're for you personally. I hope every time I tell you that, well, Brother Brown said it's not for you. It's not gone from you. It's not even for you people that are sitting there in 1963. It's, in other words, it's for a group of people that's not even sitting in this room, which most of us I was three years old in 1963. Some of you were older. Some of you were a gleam in your mom and daddy's eye. But uh, we weren't there. Now we're here. Yes. The Spirit is here to anoint the people, the right people, for the right time and the right place. And that's what I'm contending, that right now, the people are on the earth that needs to be on the earth to take a body change. Yes. It's never been before. What is the difference that's basically the same thing. Yes. Basically the same thing. Because to suppress the truth is that, let's take for example, even Martin Luther. Martin Luther read the just shall live by faith. Martin Luther read the Torah, which said there's only one God. Right. Behold, O Israel, your God is three. No, he said, Behold, O Israel, your God is one. But now, Martin Luther, anointed by a demon, Sorry, but you can't be anointed by God and tell a lie. He was anointed by a devil on his spirit realm, not his soul, his spirit realm to teach a Trinitarian doctrine. That's why Brother Brown said, and I read it to you the other Sunday, the Trinitarian doctrine come from hell. It did not come from heaven. So who's in hell? The devil. So it comes from the devil. All right? That's why we that's why I like to now as we're bringing the seals out to see more that we, like I said, compartmentalize. And I think that's what Paul's doing. He's compartmentalizing. He said, okay, the soul's fine. 
we got to work on this spirit realm. Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul was saying, oh, wretched man that I am in his soul. Right. That thing inside of him was the Holy Ghost. That was a prophetic gift he had. But what was he talking about? He was talking about that middle man, the spirit realm, the memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination. And remember, one more time, this thing does not sin. It's a product of sin. And it will manifest sin. But you don't sin with your body. You want me to give you a quote? The Bible said, Jesus said, now, before Jesus came, if a priest, preacher, whatever, were to touch a woman and then have an act with her, he committed adultery and they killed him, right? Jesus comes up and says, I say unto you now. What's he saying? Not in your flesh. In your spirit realm. You lust after a woman. Right. You've already now your flesh never done it. Right. right. So you flesh, you know that's what I'm saying. Take the flesh out of the way. It's that spirit realm that we are contacted both from God and from the devil. Amen. Amen. That's our problem that we need to work on, and I believe that's why the seal's opening up. To me, that's the thunder. The thunder's telling us, hey, we're born again in our soul. It's just as perfect as God is. Paul is not saying he's lost. Paul is. Paul's a born again believer, but he's still saying the things I would not I do, things I do I would not. Now that's not with this guy, that was with the inner man. Because listen, this is only motivated by what you think. We're all adults here, you know, they say the, the biggest sex organ is your brain. That's right. Right? Why? Well, that's not your flesh. It's your brain. Your brain is what your problem is. Your body only reacts because it's connected to the, to the brain. Right? But that soul of man. See, that's why it's so special that we know that if the soul's born again, it's untouchable. Yes. It's, it's finished. It's over. That Genesis 1.26 man that I love so much, that man is now in power and we can sit here and not be like Martin Luther and let Satan run through a filter. But God said, okay, you're going to preach to just your live by faith. I'm going to put my stamp of approval on that and that's what you're going to preach. Because Jesus, I mean God, whoever you want to say, never put his approval on a Trinitarian doctrine. He never put his approval on an eternal hell. All right? All right. Amen. That's why we're compartmentalized. We move these things out of the way and just let's this hone in on the spiritual man. Because you got to read the Bible. If the Bible is written to Christians, you can't say that we are still whoremongers and liars. And remember when we read that the other day in Galatians, I believe it is. Man, he, he, he got us all. He says, such were some of you. But you're washed. You're sanctified. Amen. And what? You're just as righteous as God is in your soul. That's right. And what's going to happen one day is we're going to realize that that thing can't, be, can't stay in there. It's got to work its way on out. Amen. And the Holy Ghost, well, I didn't bring the quote this Sunday, but I will next Sunday. Brother Brown said, "It'll fill every fiber of your being." Well, now you have this is fiber, mm -hmm. so the Holy Ghost is going to have to fill this thing, this thing that Mom and Daddy brought on the earth. That's dying, you know, getting worse, going to the doctor, and all these things. That's not your soul, person. That's it's just the body that has was born in sin, right. a product of sin. Right. But we have to deny that. That's got to be denied. Yes, and we got to go on with God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it to them. In other words, God showed them the truth. Now to me, see there's that mystery of iniquity, because iniquity is what? Knowing to do good and don't do it, or knowing not to do it and you do it anyway. Alright? Because look, realize this. There is no false doctrine ever come from God. So these preachers in the message, preachers that are preaching these things that are that are false, that didn't come from God. I don't care if they can raise 25 million dead people. I really don't care. That doesn't bother me. But if he'll point me to the right word of God and what will what he says will ring true in me, then amen, whatever he does. But now, if he takes me to another God, I don't care if he has signs and wonders. I really don't. That don't bother me one bit. But now people in the message is just it's just 
we're just they're just waiting. You just watch. I've said this a long time. Haven't I? That's right. You just wait. There's a man in this message going to jump up, have signs and wonders and healings, but he'll take them away from God. You watch and see. Yeah. Cause that's what people are waiting on. What? Where the signs? What is this flesh thing? Is what gets all excited, you know? But remember, <clears throat> if the soul's right, somewhere it'll all line back up. Now you might get off a little bit. Sure enough, honestly, you can get off a little bit. We've had things in our mind that we thought of that we thought was right, and the preacher come along and preach that it wasn't, and what it lines everything right back up. That doesn't make us lost. But if we would have denied the truth, that's what these do. They've denied the truth. They hold the truth, and they deny telling it to the people. Well, see, Paul's already seeing that, and that's that white horse rider that's attached itself to the church. Then we go to red. Then we go, we'll go. we talk about the black horse this afternoon. Because that which made known to God's manifest. Okay, for the invisible things. This is what I like. I like this right here. Because I go back to the quote where Brother Brown said that the most illiterate person can get born again. It's not because of your education. It's not that you can read. And it's not that you can understand all the seals and the plays and the vials. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But watch this. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Watch. Being understood by the things that are made. Well, understood by us. Okay. Even his eternal power and Godhead, that they are without excuse. Now let me read you what it says in the in the Greek. That's number twenty. For the invisible things, even his eternal power and deity, since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived by the things which are made, so that they are inexcusable. So here we go. An illiterate man that can't even read. But anybody with one eye and a half sense, the old man said, knows that we were born in some bad condition. Because we're dying. Right. We have these evil thoughts. We do these evil things. Right? right? So you take a man that can't even read, but he's sitting on his porch one day and he hears one, somebody, a Christian, because life has to come through the body, yeah. he hears a Christian talking about something different than what he's taught. Okay, and so now that illiterate person can say, "Okay, I want what you got." Well, what's that person going to do? That person that you don't even have to take him back to the Bible, yeah. and that doesn't show weakness that you take him to the Bible. But I don't have to take people to the Bible. Right. Tell them how Brother Brown didn't say tell them how to read the Bible. He said tell them how your fire got lit. Right. Your fire got lit. Right. Tell them how you got to come where you're at. Right. Then you can take them to the Bible, maybe. And, but, but an illiterate person... Because see, Godhead. The Godhead can be explained by just being a human being. Right. Of course, we are, we are finite. He's infinite. Right. But even being finite, I'm a father, I'm a son, a minister, a human, a husband. i got 20 different titles, but I'm one person. To my grandbaby, when she walks up, then I become a granddad to her. I don't treat her like a wife. Right. I treat her like a granddad. So I've got these attributes in the same way that's the way the Godhead. <clears throat> the Godhead can be explained by what? By understood by the things that are made. Because God didn't create us. God didn't create us to be different. He created He created Adam and Eve perfect. That's right. Amen? Right. And then Satan comes in to what? Not into Adam's flesh. Adam still had all the working parts before then. They just, Brother Brown said he had a Holy Ghost veil over his what? Mind. His mind had a Holy Ghost veil over it. Not his body. His mind. So what did Adam do? When Eve stepped out into that middle realm, that memory, reason, conscience, faith, and imagination, because that affection is not affection to God. Filial love has no affection to God. That's right. Because it's totally contrary. It is. it is. It's totally contrary. You think about it. That's right. Filial love is contrary to God. It Sorry, because it, it causes us to do what we do. Right. Procreation and all these things, that's not of God. Right. It's permitted. Right. It, nothing wrong with it if it's done right. That's right. But from that realm, it can be done wrong. Amen. So Eve steps out into that realm. So what Adam do? Adam said, well, i got to do something, so I'm going to step out in that spirit realm. He had to. Yeah. 
because he sold us out. He didn't sell us out in that in his soul. He sold us out in his in his spirit realm. Then what? His body reacted to what he was thinking. That he had never thought those thoughts before. And his body reacted and he did what he did. So to me it's very simple. When you take those three and really we preached body, spirit, and soul for years. But we really never compartmentalized and said, okay, if the soul is born again, move it out of the way. You can't perfect perfection. Because if you're born again, I'm telling you, we're going to preach on that one day about the power that lays inside of you. Because the Holy Ghost inside of you is perfect. Never sinned a day in its life. Never had a false doctrine. Never had a false error, error any error in its life. Because remember, if there's one thing held against you, God can take you to judgment. Amen. So if you're born again, that soul, that's why those who He has justified, if you keep on going, He has already glorified. All right? So that's in the that's in the soul of man. But the spirit realm, remember, it's where, remember, God took the heart, Satan took the where's your memory come from? Where's your reasoning come from? Where does your conscience come from? Where does your affection come from? Where's your imagination come from? From the mind. Okay. But through that, though, being born again, though, we are turned. Okay. And that's what Paul's talking about. These men are not doing it. Watch, because we're going to watch and see what happens real quick before we go to get finished with this. Because they took the truth and held it in unrighteousness, and this is what happened. That's why you'll see. You will see. And you can look back, and Brother Dale can tell you many things been in the message almost 60 years that any false doctrine if you stay in that false doctrine it leads you into a, a, a um, well let's just say one false doctrine about the the planting of a seed well this preacher finally plants a seed in a 18 year old girl you know yeah. truth right because of his doctrine God didn't tell him to do that right <laughs> You see, so what happens is they're holding the truth. Watch what happens when you hold the truth in unrighteousness. Let's read. You know why? Because Paul already saw this. Watch. Because he's telling you, there are no excuse that we are to see anything but one God. Okay. See anything but the purity of the gospel and even his eternal power in God is so that they're without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, now that new is not new like Adam knew his wife. Right. Because when you know God in that way, when you have an intimate relationship, that's when you go into that Holy of Holies and you, you're born again in your soul. Those people never did because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not that's right. as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their own imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. That's what we're going to talk about today. That's why I said Paul is preaching the seals. We just, he didn't know what to call them. Now we know what to call them. Looking back, we can see, because we're looking at today, we're looking at the dark horse, the black horse. And it's not so much physical death, but they're killing these people spiritually. Spiritual death is way worse than physical death. Because you're alive, the Bible says she is what? She's what? Alive, but she's dead while she's living. Right? And she is the church. I'm not talking about the women. I'm talking about when I say she, now I'm talking about the church. Me included. All of us men included. We are the church. She. Could you say they knew God by the letter like we do today? Yeah. But what they took was is they took that letter though and they ran it through a filter. They became fools. Okay. He's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen to them. Watch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because what happens? You take the desire in your heart and you don't put God in there, the devil's going to watch. This is what the devil's going to do for you. And we see this more in this day than it was in, in back then. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now think about all the fox doctrine that's been in the message and how they went off on polygamy and, and adultery and all these different... It always... Why? Because that soul is not anchored in the Word. Amen. So the real person shows up yes, right. and manifests through the flesh. Amen. Look, 
and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. In other words, image or an idol. Birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Look, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Hmm, how about that? Let me read it in the original. Who exchanged the truth concerning God for a false religion and reverenced and served the creature rather than the Creator who is worthy of praise to the ages. Amen. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature. It all went to flesh. More than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up until vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into what is against nature. And we know what that is. That's lesbianism. Alright? Because remember, people, what they manifest and even what we manifest. When Brother Brown saw that one brother, remember he discerned that he was committing adultery, right? He went to the brother. And then what? God revealed to Brother Bradham that that was a demon that he was messing with organized religion, which was the same devil. Yeah. It was the same spiritual devil that was that they, because what is, what is a denominational idea against the Word of God? It's committing spiritual fornication. Because okay. what you're doing is, is you're saying you're making love to God, and you're actually making love to the devil. Yeah. Is that right? Exactly right. Amen. So what happens to that though? That demon says, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to come out and I'm going to manifest it in the body. That's right. Because watch. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use right. of the woman. Yes. Paul picked that spirit up. He picked it up and knew what was happening. Burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, seemly, right. and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, God knew they were going to continue to do it. He just said, all right, go ahead. Because he knew they wouldn't change. See, we always have hope. But he knew they weren't going to change, so he just said, okay, go ahead. Believe what you want to. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, look where it took to it, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. We see that now. That all comes from, let me be plain, that all comes from a denominational idea. That's it. Called this false doctrine against God. False doctrine against God doesn't make these people do this. But God said, okay, if you're going to fill yourself up with something and it's not going to be me, there you go. There's your list. That's what you're going to do because what? Satan's going to do. He knew what that spirit was going to do. Because look, <clears throat> inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. Let's see what that word right there means. Implacable. It means literally without libation, which usually accompanies a treaty. Truthless. Truth. In other words, they have no. They have no. <clears throat> uh, when God, you know, He gave. What's the word I'm trying to say? In other words, He gave them covenants. He gave us all covenants. He gave us promises and things. He just pulled them right out from under that promise because they're the truth break, truth breakers. The truth, yeah, the truth breakers. Unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things. Now, see, he's talking about. He's not talking about. Well, I guess it leads you to that. But when Paul talks about these people, see, you got. That's why I like to get in Paul's head. Paul was seeing this with his own eyes. That if you turn God away. If you turn God away and start doing your unrighteousness, 
I see these people that were once in church or that were once my friends or that was once my acquaintances. <clears throat> this is now what they're doing. So what he's saying is, oh, so God's going to give them a reprobate mind and turn them over to all these things right here. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. <clears throat> in other words, they associate with each other. And you see that. Birds of a feather flock together. You know? <clears throat> we don't... You know, I have pleasure with being here among my brothers and sisters. I used to have pleasure other places. Amen? Everybody else, we, have, we just had pleasure other places. That's right. Isn't that something these people know the judgment of God and they still do Well, that's what I'm saying. These people once went to church. These are not just people that grew up drunkards, murderers, whoremongers, fornicators. No, they were once in church because they took the truth of God and made it unrighteousness. Remember, these people hold the truth. That's right. And look, when they hold it unrighteousness, you see what happened. <clears throat> and you see it happen even in a nominal world. You see people, these people commit adultery. That's not of God. You know that. <clears throat> but why do they do it? Because they hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. That's why that the breaking of these seals moves all that out of the way. <clears throat> Satan's riding. We know where he's riding. We know what he's doing with it. We know his tactic now. Brother Brown said one time, he said, we now have Satan's answer. They did not have Satan's answer in Martin Luther's day. They didn't have, in Wesley's day, they did not have Satan's answer. In the Pentecostal day, they did not have all of Satan's answer. But today, because you know what? There's only one question. There's only one question left. Can we get this thing changed? That's all. Everything else is done. Except this. we got to get this thing changed. That's it. Well, actually, we're preaching the resurrection. I was thinking the other day, you know, resurrection's got to come before we're changed. Right? But we're preaching the resurrection now. That's right. Because once we get all this deadness out of the way, then the, the dead that were in Christ that are in another dimension are going to walk over into this dimension. Right. Then we which are alive and remain right. shall be changed. Right. Right? <clears throat> so we're preaching, I think we're preaching the uh, preaching the resurrection message now. Right. That's Amen. right. Amen? I really do. I believe we're preaching the resurrection message now and then one day the dead's going to just come among us. That's right. And then we're going to know then that all hell's fixing to break loose out there, so I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about that. Right. But you know the poor old 144,000, they're waiting on us. Right. That's right. They're waiting on us. They're over there in Israel, been looking for what? 2,000 years. Well, they've been looking for 4,000 years for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Been here the whole time. And then finally their eyes are going to be open, and we'll see that when we go on into the fifth seal and the sixth seal. We're going to see that Israel's eyes are open. <clears throat> but the fifth and sixth seal is going to make our eyes. Like I said last Sunday, God's got to get into the womb of our mind something that nobody on the face of this earth has ever faced is a body change without death. You say Enoch, I'm not Enoch's way back in. Okay. Elijah's back in. I'm talking about us today. Amen. Even Jesus had to die. Okay. Amen. Amen. But he died so that we could live. Amen. Yes. All right? He died that we could change our body, or not us change our body, but we do have something with, to do with the body change. You can either reject it or accept it. You can either sit here and you know wear long dresses and long hair and go to a message church, but you can die and go to hell. Right? All right. Lord bless you. Pray for Nathaniel. He'll do a good job, I'm sure. He'll